Hey everyone, me again. If you're new around here, my name's Alice and I make videos all about affordable beauty and fashion. Today I thought I would just keep things simple and just do a get ready with me. My skin is looking pretty stressed out at the moment, so we're gonna fix that. So yeah, let's just jump in and put some makeup on. So I'm going to start out with my skin. Recently I've been using two different kinds of primers. So I normally use something mattifying and pore filling down the centre of my face and then something a little bit more dewy and a bit more hydrating everywhere else. So in the centre of my face I'm going to be using the Maybelline Baby Skin Primer today. I'm going to use that anywhere where my makeup would normally get a bit shiny, especially under studio lights while I'm filming and also on my forehead because I've got quite a bit of texture there. And then everywhere else I'm going to use the Revolution Gold Elixir Rosehip Seed Oil. I don't have very much of this left, but I think I've got just about enough to do underneath my eyes and on my cheeks. I'm sure you're all really bored of hearing me talking about this product, but I genuinely do use this every time I do my makeup. This is the Collection Illuminating Touch Concealer in the shade Naked One. It's a really nice pink salmon colour, which is really good for counteracting the blue and purple undertones under my eyes. And I'm going to blend that out with the Real Techniques Expert Concealer Brush. So at this point I normally go in with a green colour corrector. I think all the green colour correctors in my collection have been discontinued so I can't recommend a specific one but honestly most of them do exactly the same thing. So I'll either use something more liquidy like this one, this is the Gosh Mix and Fix Colour Drops. So something like this you can use as a concealer or you can mix with a primer or a moisturiser and kind of use it all over your face. Or you can get green concealers like this one that just come in a little jar or in a little colour correcting palette. This is better if you've got like a specific area of redness that you really want to target. So lately I've just been using this Gosh one. It's very very pigmented but also because it is a more liquidy texture it does make it a bit more versatile it just means I can use it in different ways but recently I've just been getting it like this and just going straight on the areas of redness on my face I think there's something from number seven that's very very similar that I've used in the past so if that's still available I'll link that in the description box below and it doesn't completely get rid of redness by any means but it does help to just take the edge off a little bit and then it just helps you use a little bit less foundation. This is like the first time in a really long time that I filmed a makeup tutorial and not worn fake nails. So this feels a little bit weird, but I've run out of them and I can't exactly just hop down to Primark at the moment. So we're making do. In all seriousness, I was actually going to have a bit of a chat in this video about how current events are going to impact this channel and things like that. But I don't know, I just feel like that would be a little bit depressing. I feel like most people at the moment are coming to YouTube as a bit of like relief or a distraction, which I completely understand because I'm doing the same thing. But it's not just that. If I'm being honest, I don't really know how it's going to impact my channel. I don't really know how it's going to impact a lot of things in my life, really. I think most people don't really know what's going to happen right now, and that does include the government as well, which is terrifying. But there is one thing I really wanted to ask you actually. So you guys know I don't just do makeup content here, I also do fashion content. And I'm not really sure about filming fashion videos right now. So I was wondering if you could help me out, because uh, you're the ones who are actually going to watch them anyway. So if you could let me know in the comments what you think, that would be really helpful. Because I film things like lookbooks and what I wore this week and stuff like that. I obviously can't film what I wore this week videos because, because I'm not really going anywhere. And uh, look books again it's the same thing it just feels a bit strange filming a lookbook because I personally like to dress up when I'm going out it's not something I do when I'm staying inside all day whereas makeup is absolutely something that I do for myself for fun for creativity so that's something that I'm happy to keep doing fashion just feels a bit odd at the moment but of course you might still enjoy watching things like lookbooks as just Again, like relief, a distraction, a bit of entertainment. Some of you might still want to wear nice outfits every single day, even with what's going on. So let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll just go with whatever you want. But back to the makeup. I've been doing a slightly different technique recently. So usually after I put my colour corrector on, I just go straight in with foundation over the top. But recently I've actually been setting the concealer. I think I first saw Kami Anyway doing this on his channel, and I think when I was watching 
using Robert Welsh. He's mentioned a few times putting powder on on top of your primer before doing your foundation as well. And I tried it and it does look very mattifying on my dry skin, but it also really helps amplify the coverage, which is really good if your skin's having a bit of a meltdown like mine is. So the powder I've been using is from Revolution Pro. This is their powder foundation in the shade F2. So this has got a bit of a tint to it. It's got a bit of coverage. And that again just helps me use a bit less liquid foundation. So I'm just tapping over the areas where my skin is the most red, which are my cheeks and jaw, especially this angry bit right here. And along the breakouts, I'm having so many breakouts at the moment. My skin is not happy. And then I also set down any areas that get quite shiny, especially areas that get shiny on camera. So that's the center of my face, just around my nose, along here. This bit always looks really shiny when I go in to edit my videos, even though I do set my face with powder every single time I do my makeup, this bit always looks really, really shiny. And I also set this bit on my forehead, just in the center. This is another area of my face that always looks really, really shiny on camera. And then I'm going to go in with foundation. I'm using the Revolution Conceal and Hydrate. This is a really nice dewy foundation so it looks really nice on my dry skin especially after I've used powder but also it's got really really good coverage to it as well so I don't have to cake my face in makeup when I use this. I'm using the shade F1 today. The shade below is actually a better match against my neck but I find that using a slightly darker foundation is really good when you've got a lot of skin redness because there's quite a lot of contrast between the skin redness and how pale the rest of my face is and using something that's a little bit darker just helps to soften that contrast but also allows me to not use as much product whereas if I go in with something really light to match my neck for example then I would have to layer on quite a lot of product to get my face to look even. That's just my experience anyway. I think I learned that from Wayne Goss on his channel. So I'm going to use a sponge for this. Brushes are obviously amazing if you want super, super coverage, but I find that on top of powder, it just looks a bit too textured for me. So I use a sponge. This one's from Shop Miss A. It's the same one I use every single time. I think I've gone in with a bit too much product, but I'll just smooth it out, don't worry. But hopefully you can still see for yourselves that I'm not using anywhere near as much foundation as I normally do because I've put down that colour corrector and that powder. So it means that the foundation I am using is going a lot further. Also, you probably can see this for yourselves, but I'm dabbing it instead of like swiping it all around my face. I don't want to move around any of that green concealer or any of that powder and like disturb all the layers I've built up. So dabbing just helps me keep everything where it's supposed to be. I'm making this sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I'm not a makeup artist or anything. Everything I've learned about makeup, I've learned from YouTube, from people who actually know what they're doing. I'm not putting any of this foundation on my eyelids because this foundation is very, very dewy. And that means that it's going to really crease on my eyelids. So I'm just avoiding that area. I've still got a bit of redness peeking through. So I'm just going to build up the foundation where I need to. And because my face is looking a bit darker than my neck, I am going to take a bit of this down my neck as well. And I'm probably going to have to use a bit of bronzer in this area as well. And a bit of extra contour, that's fine. So my skin is looking a lot more even now. I'll still use a bit of concealer later on. You know, you can still see my blemishes because they're just massive. But usually at this point, once I've done my foundation, I like to do my eyebrows and my eyes, and then I come back and finish the base afterwards. So I'm going to start with my eyebrows and I've been filling them in with powder recently. So this is the brow powder I normally use. It's unfortunately discontinued, but it's from Obsession. But sometimes if I'm just looking in my eyeshadow palette, I can find a shade that I'm happy to use on my eyebrows. So for example, with this palette, this is the Chocolate Cherry palette by Revolution. I would use this shade right here called Almond. So I'm basically looking for like a light to medium, brownish, blondish color that's quite ashy. And this one, it's not perfect, but it would do the job. I use other products on top of the brow powder. So if the color is a little bit too warm or a little bit too light, it's not the end of the world. I can still get it to work. So I'll just use this one today just so that you can see how I'd normally do it. I just take an angled brush, this one's from Primark, and I focus on the bits of my eyebrow that are very sparse. So that's just towards the end for me. And I find that the brow powder 
really helps to fill in the gaps in my eyebrows. So I'll still go over this with a pencil and draw in the individual hairs, but this is just a really good starting point for me. After that, I take the same brow pencil that I use every single time. This is the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Taupe. After that, I'm taking the Essence Make Me Brow. I used a lighter shade. It's quite ashy, so if I've used a warm brow powder like I have today, this again will just help correct that. Okay, they don't look even at all, but that's the best I can do. I've been watching a lot of Robert Welsh recently, and he keeps going on about how important it is to use an eye primer, so I'm going to use one today. This is from AOA. This one definitely needs replacing. I have ordered another eye primer from Boots, it's on its way, so I'm really excited to try that. I don't find these products kind of help with the redness on my eyelids as much as using a concealer, but I'm still trying to get into the habit of doing that more and just not layering up so much product on my eyelids. I haven't really been doing a lot of eyeshadow looks recently just because my foundation's been taking so long that I kind of get bored <laughs> and I just want to get my makeup finished as quickly as possible. But today I do think I want to use a few colours from this palette. I'm going to take the shade Pear and I'm just going to put that in the crease really softly just as a starting point. I'm probably not going to do anything too dramatic on my eyes today. You all know that I'm not really like a cut crease person. Then I'm going to take the shade Morello down here, just a little bit of that, just to deepen up the crease a little. I'm just going to start out by placing it on the lid in a very concentrated area and then I'll go back in with my fluffy brush and just blend everything out. And then for the lid I'm going to start off with the shade Blossom in the palette and I'm just going to use my finger to place this on the lid. And then just to get a bit more sparkle on my lid I'm going to go over the top of it with this Colourpop Super Shock Shadow. This is the shade Frog. It's a really beautiful pink mauvey kind of shade. Again I'm just using my finger for this. Ooh, that's very, very pretty. I absolutely love using the Super Shock shadows as toppers. They just add so much glitter and sparkle. It's just so pretty. I know this is nothing groundbreaking in terms of eyeshadow, but I'm not really wearing a lot of heavy eyeshadow looks these days, so I'm really happy with how it's turned out. I'm going to put on a little bit of eyeliner now. I don't wear a lot of eyeliner day to day, but I do like to put it on when I'm filming just to frame the eyes. Usually I use the e.l.f. creamy eyeliner in the shade Coffee, but I couldn't find it last time I tried to reorder it. I think they might have discontinued that shade, or maybe it was just sold out everywhere. But I did find this. So this is the e.l.f. Liner and Brow Cream. The colour is very, very similar, but I'm thinking this is something you can also use on your brows if you have really dark eyebrows. So yeah, I'm just going to give this a try. It just comes in a little jar like this. The texture feels very, very similar. The shade is maybe a little bit darker than the uh, creamy eyeliner that I previously used. It's got a little bit of a ashier tone to it as well, but the texture is very, very similar, so I think I'll get along with this. But I can't really do eyeliner on camera, so I'm just going to hop off, do that, and I'll put on some mascara while I'm there as well, and I'll be right back. And we're back! So I really like the eyeliner. The performance is very, very similar to their creamy eyeliner, so it went on really smoothly, really easy to work with. I'm not quite as keen on the colour. I do think it leans very, very dark. It almost looks black once it's actually on my eyes. So I don't like it quite as much as their previous creamy eyeliner, but it's fine, it'll do. Mascara, I just went in with the same two mascaras that I use every single time. So there's this one that I get from AliExpress and the Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara. Nothing special to see there. My eyelash glue has dried up, so false eyelashes aren't really an option at the moment, but let's be honest, I can almost never be bothered to wear them anyway. I absolutely love the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. I'm definitely going to use a bit of that today. I think I might brighten up under my eyes with the I Heart Revolution Heartbreakers Concealer as well. I'm not so keen with the formula on this one. It doesn't have as much coverage as I would like, but the shade is quite bright, so it's really good for just brightening areas. And then I'll probably use something else over my blemishes. I don't think either of these are really going to cover up some of the nasty breakouts I have, but we'll get to that later. So I'm just going to start out with the Maybelline one. 
and then just add a little bit of the I Heart Revolution Heartbreakers just under the eyes. And I'm just going to use the same sponge that I used for my foundation just to blend everything in. And then on my nose, and just to cover up any breakouts, I'm going to use the Collection Lasting Perfection Concealer. This is the best concealer for breakouts, especially for really stubborn, raised ones, like I have at the moment. There are a couple of larger spots on my chin that just don't seem to want to cover up, so I'm taking a eyeshadow brush, I haven't used this on my eyes today, and I'm just dipping this into my Revolution powder foundation, and I'm just stamping over them very very gently and then I'm going back in with my really skinny brush this is actually an eyeliner brush it's the E117 brush from AOA this is what I use for my concealer it just allows me to put on just the right amount of product and I find it's just a bit easier to build concealer this way if you do have any very very stubborn blemishes So today I want to use a cream contour and a powder contour as well just because I'm filming the lights do tend to wash me out a bit plus I'm wearing quite a bit of foundation so things are looking a bit flat right now so I'm going to start with the NYX Wonder Stick what shade is this? this is in light medium and I'm just going to draw this in all the usual places and I'm blending that with a Real Techniques sculpting brush and then if anything looks a bit patchy, like it just needs to be blended a bit more with the foundation, I'll just go back in with the same sponge as before. While I'm here, I'm just tapping out under my eyes as well, just to make sure things aren't creasing too much and that I'm removing any excess product because I'm going to set this bit in a minute and I don't want to set any creases in place. I'm going to set my face with the Obsession Game Set Matte Powder in Cabo. So I find that this is radiant enough to brighten my under eyes and quite forgiving over areas of my face that are looking a bit dry, but it's also matte enough just to stop any excessive shine. As you guys know, I'm not really a baking person. I do love powder though, especially because I layer up so much foundation and concealer. I find that I really need powder to keep everything in place, but I still don't like excessive powder or baking. That's just not really my cup of tea. So I don't always put eyeshadow on the lower part of my eyes, but I think I will today just to bring everything together. So I'm just going to use Pear, and I'm just using a Real Techniques shading brush. And I'm just going to place it underneath. And then I'm using the AOA Skinny Mascara on my lower lashes. This is pretty dry. I've got another one on the way, but understandably, I imagine deliveries are going to take a little bit longer at the moment. I think I might just use the same mascara that I use on my top lashes actually, because otherwise we're going to be here all day. And then this is a really bougie extra step, but I was thinking of just taking another Colourpop shadow. This is Ladybird and just putting a little bit of this in the inner corners. Just using this really really small brush from Real Techniques. I think this is called their detail brush and then just popping that right here. For contour you've seen this product a few times on my channel at this point but this is from Fuck All Your. I get this on AliExpress. It's their Sculpt Glow. I really love this contour. I use a contour brush from Real Techniques and I just start out by pressing the product in. Again, I don't really buff or swirl too much, but I do try to fuse it out a little. I don't always need bronzer just because I've used a foundation that's a little bit darker. I think today I can probably do without. I just kind of see how I'm feeling every single time I do my makeup. And I don't usually wear highlighter when I do this foundation technique just because my skin can look a little bit more textured because of all the layering of powder and liquid products and I don't want to kind of emphasise that with highlighter but I do like blush. At the moment I'm using this blusher from H&M, this is called Cameo Pink. This is such a beautiful cool toned blush. I think I bought this last year and then never reached for it and then I just found it in my drawer recently because I, you know I'm on a low buy so I'm going through my drawers more often, I'm rummaging for my products, I'm finding things that I just don't reach for. And yeah, I've really been enjoying this. I just used the same contour brush because it's like, it's nice and concentrated and then I've been applying my blush at a bit more of an angle 
almost the same as the contour but just a bit higher up but then I'm also trying to not place my blush quite as high on like the center of my face if you see what I mean I'm trying to leave this area quite bright so I stop it a bit sooner I really hope that makes sense I am being quite heavy-handed with my blush today just again because I'm filming and things like contour and blush sometimes get a bit washed out by my studio light so I need to build it up a little bit more than like I would if I was popping out at this point. If I do go a bit overboard, I can just go back in and like fuse everything together with the same sponge as before. My base isn't entirely done, but I am going to set everything now. You'll see why in a minute. So I'm using the Obsession Fix It Extra Hold Makeup Fixing Spray. I regret to inform you that I've become one of those people who uses a fan after their fixing spray. And then I'm going to do my lips. I've really been loving the I Heart Revolution Chocolate Brownie Lip Gloss recently and a really nice lip liner to use with that is the Rimmel Exaggerate Lip Liner in East End Snob. So I'm just going to line my lips first and then go in with the gloss. And if you're following this routine at home, you can absolutely leave it here if you want to. But I've actually been experimenting with faux freckles recently. And some of you are going to think that's a bit weird because I actually have freckles. But I also wear medium to full coverage foundation because of my skin redness. And sometimes by the time I finish my makeup, my freckles are either quite faint or they're covered up completely. At the moment, I can still see the bigger ones coming through underneath my eyes. But yeah, I'm just going to add a few more. I think it really kind of softens the look of a full coverage foundation if you've got some faux freckles on. It just makes everything look a bit more natural. So I used a Lottie London freckle tint for this. I got this on ASOS. I've done faux freckles with eyebrow pencils in the past and that's been fine as well. I just saw a lot of people talking about this particular product and really wanted to give it a try. So I kind of draw these in very very gently and I put them in the same place that I have my own natural freckles so you can see I'm starting at the inner corner underneath my eye because that is where I have a few freckles already and I'm doing them quite small and quite faint I do sometimes wipe off excess product before I actually go in and draw freckles on my face and you can see I'm kind of bringing them out don't worry, I know they look very obvious right now, but I'm going to blend them in in a minute. So you can see I'm kind of bringing them out here because that's where I can see my real freckles. So I kind of just blend in my fake freckles with the real freckles. And so I just very, very gently tap everything in with my finger. If I've left it a bit too long and it's difficult to blend, I have a trick for that too. So I just get the same sponge again. I've used a sponge so much in this video, but this is just how I do my makeup. So I just take the sponge and I tap it over any areas that just look a bit harsh, soften the fake freckles a bit. And after that, it just looks a lot more natural. So this is the side with the faux freckles. They're not too obvious, but this is just uh, before and after. So I'm just going to do the other side and my nose now and I'll be right back. Okay, so that's my freckles on and my makeup is done. So I'll do some close-ups so that you can see, but I've done some bigger freckles, some smaller freckles, some I blend in quite well and some I don't. I kind of let it sit there a bit and I find that that just makes the freckles look a lot more natural. I'm quite lucky that I have my own freckles anyway so I can kind of see my own natural freckle pattern and I just kind of copy and emphasize what's already there. But anyway, this is my finished makeup look. So I have been wearing a bit more foundation and concealer, color corrector and all that stuff recently just while my skin's been having a bit of a crisis but I still try to do it in a way that doesn't look too excessive. Even though it feels excessive applying all that product, it still doesn't look too excessive once everything's finished. But that's everything from me today. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And if you've made it this far and you're not subscribed yet, then maybe you should think about doing that. I'm doing my best to keep posting twice a week as normal. That's on Wednesdays and Sundays at 9am. Take care of yourselves and I will see you at the next one. Bye.